All right, everybody, we're ready for the next uh, section, and I got nominated to talk about a Falcon Pie player. So, I'll, uh, my name is Drew Hemsweller. I'm uh, here in Indiana, in central Indiana, in Brownsburg, so I'm just on the west side. Uh, a little bit about me and my wife, Lacey, is with the uh, and I've got three kids. One of my youngest is Dane in the background, so he's there. He's the lucky prize drawer. Uh, and my father Gary is here as well. He assisted highly in the name tag making, so I appreciate both of them uh, being here today. Uh, they're my gophers and assistants on the show and setup and, and display. Uh, I am a degree mechanical engineer from Purdue. A lot of, a lot of Purdue uh, shirts around, so we're happy to see Edie come back for a year. But, um, I've been doing the sequencing of light shows since 2013, so it's getting close to 10 years. This is my 10th, 10th year to do the show. Uh, this is a picture in 2019 of my display. It's roughly 30,000 pixels. And about a month and a half after I took this picture, we decided to move locations. And I ended up not losing our house, but the house is so far away from the road that you can't really see it, so I had to move it to the yard. So now I have to go to a walk, walk, very unimpressive picture, because um, it's all spread out. So this is probably about a football field's length worth of display from end to end. It's still the same props. So the little dots in the background are still a four foot wreath, but it just, it doesn't look good on videos, and it doesn't look good on pictures. So that's that's what you're stuck with. So, um, but I moved the show to a different location. I put in a 500 foot driveway just so cars could park. Um, I've got about a thousand foot of very fiber optic cable because I can do it with Wi-Fi, but I like hardwired. So, um, so that's enough about me. We'll talk about the Falcon Pipe Player, what, what it takes, and I know that's people here with zero experience. So I've got to start with that. And the good news about this hobby is there's really only two major things that you need to know. Two is all you need. So they're both coincidentally found on xlights.org. The first one is the download page. When you go and you download your software, you get the X-Lights, it comes with a couple other pieces of software, you can do everything almost immediately from that piece of software. You can throw your props on there, you can put your display on there, you can sequence songs, all of that you can learn and it costs you zero dollars. So you don't have to go spend a bunch of money on these props, even though we're all guilty of doing that today because I think there was only one person that doesn't have any, any hardware yet. So. We're all envious of him that he hasn't spent any money yet. Um, so that's, that's the first, first step. The second thing is the next tab is the Zoom meeting. If you're not familiar, the Zoom meeting on this xlights.org, go there, you can get help. If tomorrow you're like, hey, what did they say or how do I do that? There's always people in the Zoom room 24-7. Um, if you're not familiar, there's people from Australia that are just as crazy as we are here in the United States and therefore it follows the sun. So at 4 a.m. <coughs> the time, there's still going to be people in Australia that are up and, and supporting the hobby. So you can always get help in the Zoom room. That's going to be the easiest as opposed to phoning your friend or a buddy or whatever. These guys are, are really, really good. So those are the two, two things that are easy. So when you download the software, you get your little icon. Um, it's a Nutcracker because that was the original software. It was Nutcracker software before it was x -Lite. So that's why you see these little, little uh, logos on there. So click on that. It's going to turn on x -Lite. You do everything in x -Lite. You program it. You can import sequences, so on and so forth. And I'll fast forward about 80 to 100 hours. And you might get a sequence. You know, there might be some cursing in there, but now you've got an S FSEQ. So uh, there's a little, little time delay, but you have now a file can uh, play and, and you need to be able to play it. You can play it directly from x lights but nobody ever does because you need it to turn on when it gets dark out and you want it to turn off before your neighbors start to play at 10 or 11 o'clock, whatever that is. So we need to have a way to play our sequences. The good thing is there's only two choices for the most part. The next one is the same little icon that you downloaded. This is an X scheduler. It's the software that comes with x -Lights. So you can play your sequences, you load them into X-Scheduler. There's a lot of functionality in X-Scheduler. The other choice is Falcon Pie Player. So those are your two choices of a player. They're both great, I've used both of them. I've used both of them the same season just to test things out. So they work well. Um, for the most part, it's Chevy versus Ford. Um, the, 
sequencer, you need to install on a computer, <coughs> on a laptop. It doesn't take a lot of horsepower, so anything you got laying around, you can use on the on X scheduler. If it's a Falcon Bible layer, we're going to need some dedicated hardware. So I'll talk through some of those steps of what that is and how we start differentiating what that looks like. From a hardware perspective, on the Falcon Pilot layer, there's two choices. There's some oddball things you could really try to make it work, but for the most part, everybody is either installing a Raspberry Pi image or a BeagleBone black image. Um, it can run on a BeagleBone green. There might be some industrial models that are a little bit weird, but for the most part, everybody's got a BeagleBone V, Rev C. They can work on older ones, but that's um, for the most part a BeagleBone. Raspberry Pi, same thing. Pi 4s are out, they're harder to come by. You've got to either get on a wait list or be lucky enough to watch those for the new hardware of Raspberry Pis that, that come. So, those are your two choices. Why do you want to use one or the other? Uh, I, my personal opinion, I think Raspberry Pis are geared a little bit more for video and maybe even for a master player. So it's got an HDMI, it's going to be a little bit better for those type of processing, maybe a little bit more brute force processing power. Whereas BeagleBone, the, there's a lot of nerd stuff behind it, under the scenes of how it works, but it, in general, it's a little bit better for running pixels. And so you'll see controllers being built around BeagleBone because it can process, process more output light channels than the Raspberry Pi. So, I'll pause here and I'm going to take a little aside and talk about controllers and then we'll come back to a Falcon Pi player. It gets a little bit confusing because we're talking about a Falcon Pi player, but we have standalone controllers. So, SAN devices, I mentioned it because Jim uh, is the owner of the company of SAN devices, one of the early ones for controller design. Falcon controllers, they fit. Everybody's familiar with Falcon controllers and then Experience Lights is another one that, is, that has come along. The other choices revolve around the cape and the beagle bone. So these controllers need a beagle bone to be plugged in to make it work. So Colt lights and Colt and then Wally's lights. There's a couple other versions that are, have capes for beagle bones, but you can kind of draw a line in the sand. The ones on the left, they're standalone controllers, they have to listen for something. They're listening for your X scheduler. They're listening for a Falcon Pi player. They're listening for your player to send them data, and then they'll output to the lights. The ones on the right are going to be BeagleBone related, and you have to install a Falcon Pi player on them. They can do the same thing. They can listen to your master player, but they can also be a master player. So you could potentially eliminate one of the pieces. You don't necessarily have to have a master player to make it run. They can be a master player and output to the lights. So pausing for any questions, if, if anybody's got any relative to controller types and how they're a little bit different changes. The other thing of note is there's Falcon controllers and there's Falcon Pi players. Like what's up with all these birds? Why is everything Falcon? Uh, David Pitts is one of the original designers or, and architects and he lives in Falcon, Colorado. So there, that's the common denominator of why Falcon. He started Falcon Controllers, and also Falcon Pi Player was also started there as well. So he's got architectural fingerprints in both of those companies that make physical controllers, and then also the Falcon Pi Player. They're different, and it can get confusing if you don't understand that Falcon Pi Player is the player, Falcon Controller is another one. So I leave those there just to make sure that we're separating out the types of controllers. So we'll go back to the to pieces of hardware that we need to install our Falcon Pi player. And where do we get that software? Start from the very beginning. I, I'll just Google Falcon Pi player. You'll come up to GitHub and you're like, well, this is, sounds like a bunch of nerd stuff where people do software development. I don't want to deal with that. Um, there's a lot of things on here that is very confusing. But on the top right, you can see uh, falconchristmas.com. You can click on that link and that takes you to a forum. And so here's another good place to land. There's a ton of information on falconchristmas.com. There's forums, there's the latest troubleshooting. If you want to just read up on the latest code, 
Dan Colt was one of the developers of Falcon Pi Player, and he'll upload updates. You'll see the latest things that are coming. So there's a lot of forum information. You can have specific questions around Falcon Pi Player, and it's all going to be here on this. The if you scroll down on this image, you'll see uh, a couple different options for the latest software, and you'll get to a place at the bottom of the page with the latest, and it'll say set up an image and selecting an image. It goes back to the two different choices we have. Do you want the pie image or do you want the big long <coughs> image? I just grab both of them if they're the most current that you have. Um, so I have them. So if I'm writing an image to Raspberry Pis, I have those, and you got the other ones for so I'll grab both of these, I'll put both these links, and you can download them. There's a zip file, you unload them, and you'll have an image ready to be burned to a mini micro SD. So, micro SD, a little bitty card. If everybody's got controllers, you're probably familiar with these, but you'll have, you want to burn an image to this, and how do you do that? The piece of software, you can, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can use Windows Disk Imager, uh, the Etcher is a piece of software, it's free, you can download, you can um, create that and do that image, put it on your SD card, you plug it in, and you go. So it doesn't matter whether it's a Raspberry Pi or a big ball, make sure it's respective hardware that are, that are being integrated. So you turn it on, you apply power to either one of those devices, and then magically there's an IP address somewhere, hopefully. Now we get into some of the networking components of, and this trips up a lot of people. So there is a little image or a, a display output. So this is, a, for example, <laughs> F8 um, cohort, or K8 now, but they've got a little image here. So when that's booting up, you can watch this. When it's plugged into your network, if your network is set up typically for DHCP, you'll see the IP address flash on this little display. So from that point, you can go to a web browser and put that image in. If this isn't working right, or you have no idea how to find the IP address, sometimes it's not set up the right way, there is, coincidentally, a third piece of software that you get when you download XLite. It's called X-Scanner. It's a newer, newer piece that they've added on there. And what it does is it'll scan your entire network and look for IP addresses on your home network. And it'll find everything from your routers, your TVs, to whatever is assigned an IP address through your home router, it will find. And so you'll scroll through this list, and anything that looks like FPP, Falcon Pi Player, then that's the IP address of the device that you, you just did and you just burned. So I would recommend doing one of these at a time. Make sure you figure out what the IP address of that device is, and then you can log in to that device and start setting it up from that point. So I've got some controllers that are up here. They're online. Um, I've got a, a good portion of my show that's up here, so you're welcome to come up, take a look at it. It's all cold. It's all big, long, black. Um, and so I've got them online, and we can talk through them or show and tell later. But um, what I do is I have a lot of different controllers in my yard, and I'll, sometimes when I'm setting my show up, I'll have a different tab for every controller so I can update them as I need to. And, uh, go through and I can put things in test mode and get everything set up the way I need to. So um, when you first have an IP address, either you found it through XSCAN scanner and you're like, okay, it could be 192.168.1. whatever it is, 84, you're going to log into that machine. I would usually recommend to go into your network settings and then you can modify your settings and your interface. I usually put mine in static so I can have them in order and know where they are. So mine are all going to be very similar where they're 241, 242, 243, and I'll just kind of order my controllers relative to a static list of IP addresses. So you can change those in there, you can update it, and then there's a couple other steps for um, changing your memory, changing some of the file settings. I'm not going to jump into that today, but there's other different settings that you can just for starting it for, for scratch on your people. So a couple things that I, after you do some of the final configurations, there's another place that I use a lot, just to help, and then the about over here. And you can upgrade the operating system as long as you're connected to the internet and your home network. And I'll usually either 
set this up to beginning in the beginning of the show when I'm getting ready for it, or personally, my show is always connected to the internet, so I can. Any of my controllers are connected to the internet. It keeps my real-time clock. I don't have separate networks in my house. And that's just me. There's different schools of thought on, on network architecture. But any of my controllers can be updated at any time. So if there happens to be a bug found out, I don't recommend this on December 5th, and you need to upgrade your, <laughs> your controllers, you can do that. But you want to have um, the ability to have them online. It makes it easier for me if there's something that isn't quite right. Um, I remember when I had my F, it was an F back in the day, F32s were called when they came out. So I think in 2018, I, I was the first year I used Colt controllers, and they had a limitation on the amount of pixels that they could put out. Even though they could handle it from a power standpoint, X lights had an issue, and the Colt board had a limit of like 650. And that was the first year Rosa Reeds were out from Gilbert Engineering, and at the end of them, I, I ran out of pixels. I just quit outputting pixels. I'm like, what's going on? I got power? It was driving me nuts. Well, it was a software that I had to update on the controllers. Dan Cole fixed it. And so I had to upload the new software, new operating system uh, for, for the Top of Pi player. And then it outputted the full grocery because I had it all on one, one port. Um, that's 696, that's 694 pixels. Um, so all of those are here and available to upgrade, not only the FPP, but the operating system. You can pull those down at any time. Um, the other thing at the bottom of the page that you can get to from any menu, menu is how are you running this? Is this a remote or a player? There's two choices. So if you want this to be your master player, you're going to hit player. If you want it to be the listening mode, like um, you would find for the other standalone controllers, like the Experience and the Falcons, SAN devices, uh, that would be the same concept as having that in a remote mode. So for me, I have one master player, and then I have a lot of different remotes. So my master player, uh, coincidentally, is a Raspberry Pi. So this interface is almost identical. You really can't tell much of a difference between the Raspberry Pi or the Beagle. Flipping through, actually, you can look. <coughs> there's a little Raspberry Pi on this. So there's there's the image for Raspberry Pi, whereas the Beagle Bone is actually a Beagle Bone and it says Coke Lights. If you get them from Wired Watts, I think it's got a Wired Watts logo on there, but it's all the same, same type of thing. Um, so I've got most of mine in remote mode. The other thing that I use for testing, just to make sure everything is going right, is display testing. So if I go to display testing, I can enable test mode. I can click on that and hopefully I've got at least one candy cane that's lit up and now it's display testing. So now it's working, it's live, I can change it. Um, sometimes you want to test the fill color and say, all right, well, are my RGBs in the right order? So I will take this and I expect that to be blue. It's blue. <coughs> sometimes you do this and it's not the right color and I want this to be expect this to be all red. So sometimes the RGB also <coughs> is modified, so other weird controllers, you might have that issue. Um, I'll give an example of that. This does not have anything to do with the Falcon controller, but here is a dumb little pixel tester. Let's I'm going to try not to burn up your Christmas tree. Uh, as an example, so if I hit blue, it's blue. If I hit green, it's red. If I hit red, it's green. So this dumb little pixel tester that's in this box has the green and the red switched. So instead of RGB, it's R R B or RGB or whatever. So I just know that when I use this pixel tester, it's off. So be careful because sometimes those are out of order. So that's why I use this test mode. Uh, just to make sure that those are all, all good. But then I'll turn off enable and I should go back to control and it should now be in a listen only mode as a remote player. Um, something else I can do. Oh, um, on my master. So you, same thing from a scheduler perspective. My master pilot is just this 
dumb little box here. It's actually naked on the, on the front of it. But then I also have the um, sound blaster card. So the master, you want to make sure that's where your audio is coming from for the most part. Sometimes do it other places, but I usually always recommend the master player, whatever that is, has your audio. Make it simple, just get one of those sound blaster cards. They're 20 bucks. It helps clear up all your audio issues with that. So I've got that in my house connected to um, an FM modulator going to an external antenna, and then therefore the show is FM ready for cars to pull up, and there's a 2 2 sign that's ready to go. Um, for my display, I also have a 2 2 sign would theoretically be a static show that you have. I've got an entrance to my driveway, and so I have a controller that has a lot of props connected to it, and so that's the the guy that you see outside, the little, uh, they call it just in traffic. So I have him out by the road to say slow down for the cars, and then I also have an entrance with some spinners. So the spinner down here and the, the uh, just in traffic guy and a couple other places are all connected, and so I want that it's a, still a master player, but it's not listening for audio. I don't have it sequenced to any music, so I just have a, a regular 30-minute sequence, and that'll play, and right now I've got it on repeat. So that's playing and, and running. The guy that's out there, it's running this little spinning prop here, um, and so that is a player, and so I've got a F40 Culp here that is just doing that. And so, so I do have three master players, but they're for different entrances and exits. From a master standpoint, me personally, I, I've got about 30 minutes of music every day, every other day. And so I have an odd and even day and with a rough amount of songs on here. So if I were to hit play on this, it should, it might take a second because I need to upgrade to a, a Pi, but now, one of my races is playing and some of the others should be should be playing if they're not there. I can reboot those. But um, so that is how I'll do my show. Um, from a from a scheduler perspective and from a player perspective. The other thing that we mentioned earlier is this is another Raspberry Pi and it is uh, another buy, I can't really hold it up, but I'll use that and I'll connect it to a projector. So we talked about virtual matrices. So this is a Raspberry Pi and it is set up for remote mode. And I have a virtual matrix connected to it. So it's only got one prop. You can go to the input outputs and see the channel inputs and outputs. It might be on the inputs one. Uh, but it is a virtual matrix that's connected to it. Raspberry Pi, which is still 
your fabric pipe layer and I'll go to the That's some of the features that I leverage when I just have all these open when I when the show's going. Um, the other thing I can show is instead of one of the things that also helps when you're setting up your show. I have a sequence called test bars, and it's a 30 second show, it's got, the audio's insignificant, but you can run that, and what I'll do is I'll have it going from my show from left to right, and then it stops and it goes from top to bottom, and so that helps me align my props in my show, and so if I see that, you know, this candy cane might be on before the others, then I'll, I'll know that something's not in alignment. So I can either go out and physically move my prop, or I can change it in X lights and move the prop over a little higher, lower, or up or down, and that way everything that I just re render. So this is a 30 second sequence that I use for testing purposes, and it really it's more for aligning where the, the show is. So that's another little thing that I've done. It takes five minutes to put some bars, and you're going left and right. Um, from the picture that I showed earlier, I've got just a yard, and so it's got some elevation. I do a 3D model, but uh, 3D layout and X lights, and so you can kind of see those go from the top to bottom. So there's a little elevation in my show for that. So that's what I use for for testing purposes. So hopefully all the candy canes are aligned, and then this that wreath is at a higher spot on the hill than others. So you'll see intentionally these are not all in the same order. So. Uh, but those should be going left to right, and those are in the right order, but then that should switch to red or green, and then the sequence switches. So I will leave it at that. Is there any other questions or any questions you guys have about Falcon Pie Player and kind of differing from controllers? Um, or anything with, there's ton of experts in the room. I'm not the only one. I'm just the one that has been doing it for 10 years and dumb enough not to quit, I guess. Is what <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys. Appreciate it.